Well, welcome again to our walk down Route 66, the Old Testament books of the Bible, uh, and of course the rest of the Bible, the New Testament added to that, gets us to a total of 66. And we're looking today at the book of Ecclesiastes, not one that too many of us read as a devotional text, but one that has some not only wisdom from Solomon, its author, but uh, commendation for us in terms of the way he learned. Proverbs shares his wisdom as a mature man. Song of Solomon gives us his strength and his virility as a younger man uh, with zeal for God. And then finally, in his later years, he writes Ecclesiastes and his conclusion that life is empty without faith in God. Here are four sections from the book of Ecclesiastes. If you open it up and you see immediately that chapter 1 and chapter 2 reflect Solomon's personal experiences. He gives us a little bit of insight into the kinds of things that affected his maturity and began to pressure him uh, in his later years in life. In chapter 3 through chapter 5, you have Solomon's general observations of life. And that's where you pick up the phrase that when you read the book, you'll see standing out, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. It seems that there's a pessimistic and depressive note that runs through these two chapters. Then in chapter 6 through 8, Solomon gives his practical counsel in the book of Ecclesiastes, and he finally wraps it up with his final conclusion, chapter 8, verse 6 through chapter 12, verse 14. Solomon's search for satisfaction was almost a scientific endeavor. I think his wisdom led him to be thorough in the kinds of things he wanted to know and the kinds of things he wanted to teach others. But he discovered that life without God is a long, fruitless search for enjoyment, meaning, and fulfillment. And he can state that pleasure, wealth, and success are empty when attained without faith in God. Do you know people around you that gain money but still are unhappy? Or people that choose another spouse in life but still remain unhappy? Those who uh, gather positions that others admire in their lives, but they're still personally unhappy. And so on down the line we could go. You can pursue everything the world offers and not be happy in your life. Solomon gives us that kind of observation and counsel in the middle sections of this book. I couldn't help but think about a song that George Beverly Shea wrote and I heard him sing so often, that expresses this struggle that Solomon has. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today, George Beverly Shea sang. And when you have everything but Jesus, you have nothing. And when you have Jesus and you don't have everything, you have the most important thing that life can offer you or that God will give you in the person of his son. Solomon had all the wealth, all the wives, all the prestige, all the belongings, uh, all of the uh, accoutrements of uh, pleasure, wealth, and success, and yet he was unhappy. He did not express the joy that even David, his father, as a musician, played on his harp and sang. Solomon missed 
the key thing in his life until very late along the way. Without God, there's no value in hard work. Work done with wrong attitudes leaves us empty. Wisdom greater than this world is needed to satisfy our deepest needs. When you discover that, you'll begin to get the secret of life straightened out. If you know that what God wants is the important thing in your life, then you will begin to find fulfillment. If you forget or you fail to concentrate on what God wants to give you and how God wants to lead you in life, you'll miss some of the greatest blessings that you can have. But Ecclesiastes teaches us, as Solomon writes, that the certainty of death makes all human achievements futile. God has a plan for a human destiny that goes beyond life and death. The reality of aging and dying reminds us of the end to come when God will judge every person's life. Not long ago, I met a man who was in his 90s and I had the opportunity to sit and talk to him on several occasions. And I realized as we talked and I tried to share with him my faith, he wanted to block everything that had to do with God. He wanted to say, I don't need that in my life. I've lived well. I've got enough money to take care of myself. My kids are in good shape. But there was something empty in him. And when I tried to share my relationship with Christ, he was not ready to talk about not having a relationship with Christ. And it was a sad day for me some weeks ago when he closed his eyes and went into eternity without faith in Christ. Solomon could have shared with this man and caused him to learn if he would have listened and heard that the wisest man in the Old Testament reminds us that human wisdom doesn't contain all the answers. That may be your case today. I hope you have not been satisfied with things or positions or possessions or any other claim to fame in life, but that you've discovered, as Solomon later on does in his final years, that God wants to give you the best in your life and then beyond this life in eternal life. Only a relationship to God can guide us to his word to discover the truth that he has for us. As Solomon looks back on his life, much of what has been lived apart from God and his wisdom, he recognizes that it was futile. His tone is negative and pessimistic prior to those last chapters, but his effort is not to destroy all hope on our part. He wants to direct all of man's effort toward the eternal. So he writes in the last chapter and the last verse of his book, here is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commandments, for this is the entire duty of man. I had a friend who was uh, very wealthy and he shared with me his some of his uh, joys about the wealth that he had while we talked on various occasions. But his wealth was not enough to satisfy him. He needed something more. And so deep within him, there was a craving for something that would satisfy the depth of his soul. As St. Augustine said, there is a a God-shaped vacuum in every one of our hearts and only God can fill it. And that's the way it was with my friend. He had 
too much wealth, but he wasn't full. And whatever it is you're holding on to today, but you haven't learned Solomon's lesson that to reverentially follow God and obey his commandments is the entire duty of man. If you haven't learned that lesson, today is the day to stop and kneel and say, Father, as the young prodigal did when he came home, I've sinned against heaven and against you, and I repent. Make me as one of your servants. That was what the apostles in the New Testament called themselves on occasions, bond slaves of Jesus Christ. Solomon would teach us today to become a bond slave, a reverentially fearing person before God and to keep his commandments. Once you learn those two lessons, you've got the secret of life. Too bad Solomon didn't discover it a lot sooner. May you discover it today.